Namaste and welcome everyone to our first yoga asana practice through our Simplicity Training for Inner Peace program. Uh, today we start with a practice called the Foundation Practice. This practice is also detailed and given in uh, your PDF manual so that you can take that with you wherever you are. This practice um, is called the foundation practice because it really will give you um, great roots in an asana practice. It's kind of the middle, I'd say middle range of activity level practice. It's not a restorative practice where you're really, really relaxed, which you will get next practice in the second uh, lecture. Um, and it's not something super strenuous and crazy active. So there's kind of an in-between practice, a good general practice to start building strength and stability and mobility in the body, which is the two main reasons why we practice asana physically, is to build a good balance between stability and mobility. Stability directly relates to um, our mental stability in our minds. So the more strong and healthy we feel in the body, the more uh, mentally stability and grounded we feel. So we really focus on lower body, especially working with the first three chakras, because these are the most um, commonly, um, let's say, psychological areas of stressors in our body. Um, coming from these first three energetic centers. I'll explain chakras in the third week when we talk about the subtle body. But for now, just think um, we're building a strong foundation through our legs, through our pelvis, which really create the foundation for the whole body. Um, this practice also works with creating greater mobility. Mobility can also assimilate to the way we flow and the way we move in the world. Um, with ease and effortlessness. So use this practice um, as your go-to practice. Use the other practices when you need them. This would be a great daily practice um, to start incorporating in your life to see some changes physically. And like I said, when we feel strong physically, that also impacts how we feel mentally. So I hope you enjoy this practice. We will go through slowly so that you know exactly what to do. Once you get the hang of it, you have your handouts, you can take that anywhere you go with you and practice on your own. So here we begin. So we'll start taking some centering breaths, inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. You can close your eyes, try to turn the senses inward. Just rest your palms on your knees. Deep, full inhale. Complete, full exhalation. And if you can, on your exhalation, allow that exhalation to double the duration of your inhalation. The inhalation is directly related to how much we take in in our lives. And there's so much we take in in nowadays and age. So now we're going to work on exhaling, focusing more on the letting go aspect. Letting go of stress, letting go of tension, letting go of any worries at all. Moving from the head to the heart and just be here. Just two or three more breaths like this, calming your mind, and starting to go inward. Join our hands at our heart. We'll do the Guru Invocation, the first one on our mantra sheet. Inhaling. Sucks. 
Shatra Brahma Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Taking a deep breath in, just filling our hearts with gratitude for these practices and all of the masters and teachers who brought them into our lives. And then exhale all the breath out. Gently rub the hands together, creating some heat in your palms. And then place the hands over your eyes, feeling that warmth. Inhaling, deep breath in. And then as you exhale, sigh through your mouth, letting go of any tension, stress, or worries in the mind. One more time, big breath in. And exhaling to release that. And feel free to rub your eyes, forehead, temples, jaw. Neck, shoulders, or anywhere else that does feel good for you. And then place your hands over your heart for a big breath in. And then a big breath out. And then we'll gently open our eyes. Okay? Centering is such an important part because yoga is a mindfulness-based practice and the more we can become aware and just give ourselves that time to shift from whatever you're doing in your day to this moment. It's so beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna begin with some gentle seated movements, joint mobilizations for the neck. So just make sure your shoulders are rolling back and down. Keep them down. Imagine like you're holding heavy shopping bags and then the shoulders would just be dropping down towards the floor. Okay, as we inhale, you're gonna look up, chin towards the sky. And as you exhale, bring your chin towards your chest. Good, keep going once you get it. Feel free to close your eyes. Trying to shut off just one additional sense so that we start to turn that gaze inward. Inhaling and exhaling. Moving the neck in this safe movement. And as you do any movement, we're going to try to direct our awareness towards what you're feeling, where you're feeling and sensing. So that our practice becomes place to get to know ourselves. Come back through the center. Now keep the chin parallel to the floor, eyes on the horizon line, and just move your head side to side. If you've invited anyone into your practice today and they're sitting next to you, if you see them, give them a little smile. If you're with yourself, give yourself a little smile side to side. Okay, we're trying to keep our neck as long as possible, our shoulders drawing down away from our ears. One of the most mobile parts of our spine, a cervical spine, yet one of the easiest places to get an injury. We want to keep it healthy. So come back through the center now. We're gonna drop the ear over towards the left side. So the ear's coming down towards the shoulder. You can take your right hand out, away from you. Shoulder drawing down, neck nice and long. We're not crunching that ear to the shoulder, nor are we lifting that shoulder up to reach the ear. We're keeping the shoulder down so that it increases the stretch down the side of our neck into our traps and to this beautiful neck muscle called the sternocleidoid mastoid, or FCM. Keep sending the breath there. And then come back to the center and let's do the other side. So lean to the right. Stick out your left hand for a little extra. Okay, you could always take your own right hand and drop it onto your head for a little extra pull or you could even massage this side. 
whatever feels good for you. Long, deep breaths in, focusing on the breath, focusing on where you feel sensation. Good, and then coming back to center. We're going to stand up now, so let's get up off our mats. Good. And just make sure that you feel steady here. The first thing we're going to do is something called Tadasana or Standing Mountain Pose. So as you get up and you start to sense your body in this upright position, try to ground down through the four corners of your feet. The big toe mound, the little toe mound, the inner heel and outer heel. Once you feel that firm foundation, let it rise up. So we'll kind of lift up through the legs without blocking our knees. So don't pull the kneecaps all the way back. Let them soften slightly. Then lifting from the pelvis up towards the crown of the head and then rolling the shoulders back and down once again. Palms are gonna naturally turn open. We're gonna close our eyes and we're just gonna breathe here. Three breaths, inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. See if you can soften as if you're trying to become weightless. Again, inhaling and exhaling. more. This is the posture of awareness. Breathing in and out. Good. And then from here, we're going to just start to squeeze the shoulder blades together. As you squeeze the shoulder blades, you're going to lengthen your pec muscles in the front, and we're going to slowly open the hands, palms facing forward as they are. And without changing or shifting our weight through our hips, we're just going to reach the hands up, 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 slowly. As your arms reach up, keep trying to pull your shoulders down away from the ears so that your shoulders don't come up like a turtle. You want to pull your head out of the turtle shell. Draw the shoulder blades down your back. Keep lifting and lengthening. And then just notice here, I'll show you from the side, sometimes we have tightness in our chest that our arms will only come up about this high. So then to compensate, we'll arch our backs, try to raise our arms higher. So make sure that your spine is neutral, the arms are open and lifted, and that you're pulling your chin back because sometimes what likes to happen is our chin will come forward. Good, and then just keep holding and breathing. Soft knees, soft waist, soft chest. And make sure you're relaxing your jaw here because sometimes we like to tense it up when we start feeling a challenge. Keep breathing through it. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Keep lifting and opening through the chest. Good. Then from here, take your hands into little beaks place them on your shoulders and we're going to do a nice shoulder mobilization. So as we inhale, elbows come forward, you're going to inhale, squeeze the shoulder blades back, opening your chest and then exhale, bring the arms forward and around. Uh, inhale, exhale. Inhaling shoulder blades come together and squeeze. Exhale, shoulder blades move away from one another as your elbows come toward one another. Now generally, we inhale every time our chest is open, we feel expansive, and we exhale any time we kind of close in, in this case, our elbows coming towards one another, and we are compressing. Make sure you're breathing and don't be afraid to breathe loudly. Hear your breath. If there's someone in the room, they should hear your breath. Good. Start to take it the other direction. Notice if your mind wandered away, bring it back to your breath. Bring it, bring it back to the movement. Raise your hands up again. This time, if you can, you're going to try to interlace your hands and then bring them up. 
So you're pushing your palms up through this, through towards the sky, rooting down through your feet, feeling that dual action of prana. Prana is our vital force of energy moving through the body. There's five different kind of variations of prana. Right now we're working on that downward flowing prana, it's called apana, towards the floor from the navel center downward, and then lifting up from the rib cage, through the heart, through the palms, working on prana, prana, prana vayu, upward, elevating you know, towards the heart and lung energy. Okay, one more deep breath here. Good, and then we're gonna exhale and take the hands behind. So we're gonna interlace the palms, Open the chest this way. Now don't worry if you can't do this. Grab a hold of a towel or something. Or just hold your hands maybe at your hips and start to pull your shoulders back. And we're just trying to create a little stretch in the chest and the pec area. Okay, breathe. Notice I'm not looking down, I'm not looking up, I'm just looking neutrally, neutrally in front. And at the same time, start to lift the hand away from your hips. If you have a lot of room and space, you start to draw your wrists towards one another. Make sure you keep breathing. Good. Three, two, one. Now we're going to soften our knees, release the hands forward. Imagine like you're hugging a big tree, okay? Push out in front of you, round your spine, tuck your chin towards your chest. So we're now stretching the upper back, the upper, or the, the neck, not the upper neck, the whole neck. Keep breathing here. Remember to let your jaw be relaxed. We want to use this practice to soften and relax us. And even though we might feel challenges, we try to breathe through it so not to upset our nervous system and to remind our brain that everything is okay. All right, inhale and turn the palms back up one last time. And then on our exhale, bring our hands to our hips and we're gonna start some mobilizations here. So we're just gonna circle it out. And I'm moving this way, this way, all different ways. You can just stay facing me with the skinny edge of your mat in front of me for the most part of this practice, unless I tell you so. I'm just showing you from all angles so you can get a good sense of what to do and to learn this foundation practice properly. Okay, so I should mention as we move through our hip rotations, we're really working on stretching out and mobilizing the lower back, okay? Also the hips and the low belly, okay? Now, notice I'm not going like this. I'm not moving my upper body. I'm just moving around the hips. My knees are soft to do this, okay? Go the other way around. If you don't feel so salsa, salsa dancer-ish, don't worry. Just make some bigger, like hula hoop kind of circles here until you get the hang of it, until you can kind of manipulate the hips and move in all directions. The point is to move your body safely. All of these postures are very safe to do and to just develop a greater range of motion. Good. Now we'll relax. We'll put all of our weight into our left foot, okay? As you lift up, make sure you just start to breathe right away, okay? If you hold your breath, you're going to send signals to your brain that something bad is happening. Okay? We don't want that. We want to be rest assured. All is okay. We can balance. And we're going to lift this leg up, do a big circle, and bring it back down. Some leg rotations. Now, if balance isn't the greatest for you, you can just hold on to something. Or you can touch your foot down every time. Okay? You can also do these laying down, which we'll do in another practice. This is wonderful to work on your hip flexors and hip mobility and this joint health, okay? Now take the same leg, but go the other way. Big circles, like you're kind of stepping over something, okay? 
If you hear some weird crunching, popping noises, it's normal. It's the ligaments and tendi tendons that cross the joint here. It's not the ball and socket. It's not, you're, you're not grinding it down. This is very healthy for your hips. Okay? Good. Other side. Nice. Big circles. Try to find your balance or touch down every time. Use a wall for support. You can sometimes just try it, take it away, try it, take it away. Good. And then other direction. Five. Four. Take it slowly. Three. One, last one, good. Now we're gonna move into our one minute balance on each side, all right? So balancing poses are so incredible for building stability in the body. You'll see very quickly that we use all the little stabilizing muscles of our feet, of our knees, of our hips, of our core to hold us in a balance, okay? Now, in our foundation practice, I just want you to work on balancing. So that might just mean lifting a leg, or it might mean tree pose, okay? Or it might mean this nice warrior three pose, or anything you want. But for now, in this sequence, we're just going to focus on lifting up the leg and holding, okay? Go ahead, our one minute starts now. Keep breathing and reassuring yourself that all is okay. Now for the first 20 seconds, it might feel like, yeah, this is easy, this is good. But then things will knock us off balance. And if you do have to touch your foot down at any point, just start up again, okay? Try to hug in this outer hip, okay? Your balancing leg will sometimes will just jut out because sometimes we stand like this and then it becomes easy. So make sure you hug it in, make that glute medius work. Keep grounding down through your big toe, little toe and heel. We're nearly there, okay? If you're really good at this, if this is easy for you, then I ask that you move around. You just kind of play with it wherever you want to go. However that makes you <laughs> knock out yourself off balance, just play around, okay? Good, we're there, you guys. Bring that foot down, <sighs> relax. Notice that kind of whole oh, shaky leg, feeling that outer hip, okay? The knee, the ankle joint, the foot, maybe even the ball of the foot is feeling it. And yes, you probably will feel it tomorrow, okay? Let's try the other leg. Big toe, little toe, and heel grounds down. Lifting the opposite leg, hug in that standing leg hip, find your breath, just be here. Kind of press down to the sole of the foot and get a little taller. You're challenging yourself, just moving a little bit here and there, sideways, and move the knee kind of circle outward. Stay with your breath, about halfway there. Keep hugging in your hip. That's it. If you want, you can pick your hands up or up to the sides. Two, one. And let's touch down this side. We'll say it's about a minute. Good. And then now come down onto your hands and knees, okay? We're going to come into something called cat to cow. This is a pretty common yoga posture. We've probably seen it many times. However, I've seen people do it in interesting ways. So we'll learn how to do this properly. First off, you wanna check your stance that your knees are hip distance apart and not together, okay? Knees underneath your hips hands right underneath your shoulders. Now this torso part from your back hip to your armpit, try to make it long. Try to lengthen your heart forward, draw your sit bones back in a neutral spine, 
Okay. Now when you're ready, we're going to inhale, drop the belly, arch the back, lifting through our tailbone, looking up, and then exhaling and rounding, tucking the chin, tucking the tailbone, and pushing up through the middle of your back. Inhaling, arching. Exhaling and rounding. Keep moving in this fluid motion, allowing the breath to move you. Let the breath guide the movements. Inhaling, exhaling. Sense the whole segment of the, sm the spine from the tailbone all the way up to the cervical vertebrae in the neck. Good. And then come back through the center. Okay, we're gonna do a posture next that's a little bit of a core challenge and it is amazing for building strength in the teeny tiny stabilizing deep core muscles called the multifidus muscles of the spine. This is the muscle that wrap along the spinal cord and brings the, connects the vertebrae together, okay? Really associated with our nervous system too. Start by drawing your right leg back. Now, if you're on a hard surface and need some padding for your knees, then put something underneath you. I have two mats here, okay? I'm gonna push out through my back heel, okay? Try to keep that heel in line with the hip, so if it's going way up, bring it down, and if it's down, see if you can bring it up, okay? At the same time, we wanna to try to keep our hips flat, so sometimes that hip comes up and our toes go out, so we want the toes to point straight down and our hips as flat as we can make them, and then we'll take our left hand forward. That can be an option, you can always keep it on the floor. Make sure you're breathing now. And then maybe a little smile, soften your jaw. Keep looking forward. As you reach forward with that left hand, make sure you draw the shoulder back into the socket so the back of the neck is long and spacious. Good. Keep breathing. Three, two, one. And then we'll take the hand down. We'll drop the right knee and we'll switch to the other side. Okay, so left leg extends back, right hand forward, soft shoulder, keep breathing. This is a great strength builder for our deep core muscles. Beautiful. Now take the hand down, take the knee down. We're going to come into our first child's pose. So from this knee down position, we're just going to bring the toes a little closer towards one another and push our hips back. So we're drawing our seat down towards our heels and then stretching the arms out in front and dropping the forehead towards the floor. Now, if your forehead doesn't come towards the floor, you can always take a block or something you have at home, book or something, and ground down through that brow point just to rest the head and neck. Another thing that happens a lot in people is that there's um, no space to come down. You feel like tension in your quads to come back, so then you're maybe like this. And if that's the case, that's okay. Rest here, or you can put something underneath your knees, like a bolster or a pillow, and to come down about that far and rest your head down. So wherever you are and whatever variation you're taking, the purpose of the child's pose is to rest and to pause. We wanna take long deep breaths in this child's pose. We want to pause and reset, which is so important Sometimes when we are offered those pauses in life, we start scrolling on our phones, we start busying ourselves. So this is the time to just completely enjoy the pause. 
Breathing in and breathing out. Relax. Now, if you were very short on time, you could just do the sequence up to now, but we're gonna move on for the second half. So we're gonna move now into something called a kneeling sun salute. So from your child's pose, you're just gonna come up to sit onto your heels. You're gonna bring your hands to your heart. This one's my very favorite. We're gonna inhale and stretch the arms up to the sky, lifting up to stand on the knees. And then on our exhale, we're gonna move through chaturanga. So it's like a push up. We'll take the hands forward. We'll draw the body weight forward, bending through the elbows. Try to bring your chin, chest to the floor. Slide forward on your belly. Roll the shoulders back away from the ears. Gently lift as you inhale and push back as you exhale. Now, if you feel mine doesn't look so elegant, don't worry. Just keep going. Inhaling up. Exhaling, lowering through. Keep your elbows in towards the body. On your inhale, shoulders down, rise up. And as you exhale, push it back. Good. One more like this. Inhaling up. Exhaling, lowering through your cobra. Rising up and back to your child's pose. Good. And then we're going to take the baby cobra position. So you're going to come back onto your bellies. Okay. Hands are going to be by your chest, but push them back a little bit further. If you can, draw your fingers by kind of your ribs and start of your, I don't know, halfway down, you could say. Pull your elbows in, draw your feet together. Now just lift the chest up off the floor, head up off the floor, and instead of drawing your chin up and looking in front of you, keep the chin slightly tucked so the back of the neck is long. Squeeze your legs together if you'd like, lift the hands up. Good, keep squeezing the shoulder blades. Keep breathing, full deep breaths in. Full breaths out, don't hold the breath. This is an amazing strengthening posture to help work with postural correction, rounded shoulders, also strengthens the core and the legs and glute breath in. And then exhale, we'll come back to child's pose, we'll round out the spine. Good, and then from here, coming into downward facing dog. So I'm gonna plant my hands. I'm still in that kind of um, knee down position, hands underneath my shoulders, knees underneath my hips, and I'm just gonna curl my toes, lift the hips, push the thighs back, and draw my head towards my legs, okay? So my neck is relaxed, it's not going anywhere, I'm not pushing it. And I'm not also looking up, it's just soft. Pressing out through my hands. Now, if you have wrist issues, really try to press through the finger pads. Okay? Good. And then lift up through your sit bones. So if you can't reach your heels down, which I definitely couldn't when I started yoga, bend your knees, keep them soft. Push back, lift up your sit bones towards the sky and push your thighs back to the wall behind you. We'll start to pedal out the feet here, bending one knee and then the other. Stretching into our calves, kind of waking up the back body. Hmm. That's it. And then once you kind of feel warmed up, here, we're going to walk towards our hands at the top of our mats. So coming into a pose called Uttanasana or the forward fold, we're going to drop the head, let the neck relax here, soften the shoulders and just hang. 
And these are always soft, not locked. Mine are straight, but not locked. Yours could be bent if you wanted to, if you need it. And your hands are not to touch the floor. Maybe you have your hands on blocks. Okay. And if you have any issues in the low back where you know you need to keep a flat back, you have any disc issues, use blocks and keep lengthening the heart forward. Chin stays nice and in so the back of the neck is long and stay here. Good, now to come up, we'll lengthen the spine. Draw the arms up to the side. Start reaching up to the sky. And exhale, hands to heart center. We're gonna work on something now called a hip hinge before we move into our chair posture. Okay. A hip hinge is any movement we'll take to get into any of our forward facing positions or forward folding positions. So basically we want to hinge from the waist so we can just kind of imaginary karate chop our hips and pull the hips back towards the wall behind you and then slowly come up. So just trying this movement out. Ideally we want to keep the back of the head and the whole spine and hip area in a straight line. So the hips Lead the movement, sit bones drawn back towards the wall behind you. Nice long spine coming down and then squeezing your glutes, your hamstrings, lift back up. In the gym, we call this a deadlift position. So imagine if you maybe you've done deadlift before, soft knees, and then you would pull up. Okay? For now, we'll just practice with the hands at our waist. Once you do that a bunch of times, you'll start to feel it in your hamstrings and your glutes. If you're still going, take a break now. We're gonna move into chair pose, which requires that hip hinge. So in chair pose, we take our arms up about shoulder height. We relax the shoulders back into the towards the sockets and squeeze the shoulder blades towards one another. And the stance, I like to take a little bit wider than hip distance apart and my toes slightly out. Not all the way out, just slightly, okay? Here we go, we're gonna move through that hip hinge, pushing the hips back behind us, the wall behind, and then start to bend the knees. So your weight should be into the heels, okay? Try your best to lift your spine. So sometimes what happens to get deeper, we try, we drop our head thinking that we're going further down but actually what we want to deepen is our hips going down and opening through our chest. And you don't have to go this far and you definitely don't want to come down into a squat. It's not a squat. We want to be about at parallel. Good. And then we'll slowly come forward, release that in our Uttanasana, standing forward fold. And this posture is so important to build stability. It builds nice glute strength, which is so important to the integrity of our pelvis. When we have good glute strength, we have amazing health in the back. Okay, I used to have back pain all the time, strength in my glutes, so much has changed. Okay, now we'll come up, we'll open the chest, come all the way up. And round two, push the hips back. Start to feel that weight moving back to your heels. Then bend your knees, sinking through the hips but lifting through the chest. Soften your shoulders. Let's hold five, four, three, two, one. Releasing your forward fold. Just hang. Good. And then bending your knees, opening your chest, lengthen all the way up. And then the third round. Now I'm going to show you from the front in case one thing is happening. Sometimes when we push our hips back and come down, so go for it. We're going to hold our last one together. Sometimes this happens. Knees knock in. If that's happening, send them out a little bit. Imagine like there's, imagine I'm there and I'm holding the outer edges of your knees and you're pushing into my hands. 
that's that feeling you want to have. Good. Keep holding. Three, two, one. And fold forward. Release. Okay, so I'm a little more detail-oriented because this is our foundational practice. Today we're just trying to get a sense of how to do things properly, how to move our bodies intelligently, so that we can build proper strength and mobility in the body. Good, slowly come up and stand. Okay, we're gonna now move through something called Surya Namaskar. That is our sun salutation. Now sun salutation is an advanced practice. I know that it is almost thrown into every sequence nowadays, but this sequence is tough, okay? So if you need to modify, I'm gonna first show some modifications. First of all, the meaning of Sur Surya Namaskar is sun salutation, but this is not a traditional yoga practice. Traditionally, Surya Namaskar was done by chanting the names of the sun um, in water usually, and it was a prayer. So as we embody the practice in a physical way, we're gonna focus on drawing our awareness in by bringing the right hand symbolizing body, left hand symbolizing mind, drawing them together, coming at the heart, drawing the thumbs to the sternum, and drawing that awareness inward so that we honor our inner light. Here we go in our first variation of Surya Namaskar. Inhaling and reaching up to the sky. Exhaling, pushing the hips back, forward folding, dropping the head, dropping the hands. Inhaling to a flat back. Exhale, bowing in. And then inhaling, grounding through the feet, raising the arms up, lift and lengthen. And exhaling, hands to heart center. Now you can stay with that variation if you like, or we'll continue on. Inhaling, raising the arms up. This time the variation with the blocks. Exhaling, folding forward, finding your blocks. Here we're going to inhale and step the right leg back into a lunge. In this lunge, we want the knee and ankle in a straight line. That back heel is pushing back and the heart is drawing forward. We're going to inhale here. And then on our exhale, come to a plank pose. We're going to take the hands off the block. So we don't want to do a plank on the block. Step back into plank position. Lower down through your chaturanga, either dropping your knees or keeping your knees up. Bend the elbows, hug in the body with the elbows. Lowering down, roll the shoulders. Coming up into that baby cobra again. And hug the legs back together. And then as we exhale, moving into downward facing dog. Good. Now on our inhale, right leg forward, you might find your blocks again. On our exhale, left leg forward, fold. On our inhale, raising the arms up to the sky. And on our exhale, hands to heart center. Now I'm going to do the left side without the blocks. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, forward, fold. Inhale, left leg back. Exhale, right leg back to plank, lowering through chaturanga. This time I'm not gonna to touch all the way down. It's an advanced posture. Open up into upward dog. Upward dog can only happen if your shoulders can come back and down. Knees are up off the floor. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhaling, left leg forward, lunge. Exhaling, right leg forward, fold. Inhaling all the way to the top. And exhaling, hands to heart center. So that was one full cycle. The right side, 12 poses. The left side, 12 poses. Okay? So it is drawing these, each 12 poses, linking them together with the breath. Sometimes it's called vinyasa. To move all together with the breath. Okay? One more time, right and left. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, right leg back, lunge. 
Exhale, left leg back. Plank, lower through, chaturanga. Inhaling, upward dog. Exhaling, downward facing. Inhaling, right leg forward. Exhaling, left leg forward, fold. Inhaling, all the way to the top. Exhaling, hands to heart center. Last one, left side, finish the side. Inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, left leg back. Exhale, right leg back. Lower through chaturanga, either cobra or upward dog on your inhale. Downward dog on your exhale. Inhaling, left leg forward. Exhaling, right leg forward, fold. In, reach up. And exhale, hands to your heart. So just pause for a deep breath in. Exhaling the breath out. Focusing on your inner light. Take a moment to just sense, to catch your breath, to be present. You might notice that you're a little warmer now. I'm practicing filming these videos in Costa Rica, so it's about 30 degrees out. So I'm sweating, you might be too. Now we're going to move on to the long edge of our mat. So just find a nice wide-legged position. Okay. Open up your arms. Make sure your toes are drawing straight forward. And we're going to move through that hip hinge again. Pushing the hips back, drawing your heart forward. And then slowly releasing the hands to the floor. Dropping the head, sinking a little lower as you lift your sit bones and just hang. Now I'm gonna show you from the side. If your weight is back like this, try to send the weight of your hips forward so you feel the weight kind of shift until you feel weight into the balls of the feet. If you can't reach the floor, Keep your knees soft, it's okay. Bend your knees if you have tight hamstrings. Use blocks, whatever you need to do to feel comfortable here. Just a couple more breaths for three and two and one. Soften your knees, slowly come up through a flat back. And now we're going to move into triangle position. So I'll show you from this angle. Okay. We'll turn from this position, turn the right toes out. Okay. Make sure they're actually, in fact, turned all the way out, or else you might injure yourself here. Okay. The knee is the most vulnerable joint in this posture. So we want to make sure that you're externally rotating the knee that it's in a straight line. Okay, hips are kind of square, but if you turned your knee and your hips came in, that's okay. We'll work on opening the hip flexors by doing the practice, okay? So slide your right hand down the right leg. You don't have to touch the floor. Many people make this mistake, okay? And then lift the left arm up, make a T across your chest, pull the whole rib cage back, shoulder back, so if you imagine yourself, you could be laying against a flat wall and your hips, your upper back, and the back of the head will be on the wall. What happens sometimes is people will reach forward and down, they'll jut their butt back and they'll be trying to do triangle pose like this. But that's at a great cost to your knee joint and your back. Stay here. Eventually, you might be able to come down a little further, but it won't be because you're trying to cheat yourself, okay? There's no shortcuts in yoga. Doesn't matter, the physical practice should be based on sensation, not on performance ever, okay? Last thing to note is your head, if you're dropping your head, lift it up. Look either down, neutral, or up towards your head. Bend into that front knee, slowly come out, okay? 
Now we're going to move into warrior, same leg. We're going to do all one side and then switch to the other. So we're going to start to bend into that front knee. Warrior two, so our hips are open to the long edge of our mat. We're trying to keep our head, heart, and pelvis in a straight line as we glance over our right hand. Now what happens a lot is people take too short of a stance and the knee will come over the ankle. So if that's happening, pull it back till it's right over your, uh, right over your ankle. Walk that foot back, and then stay here. Check on your back arm that it's not dropped down. Keep pressing apart the mat with your feet, and you can squeeze your glutes if you'd like to open up the hips. Okay, for five, four, three, two, one. And straighten that front leg, turn your right toes in, push your hips back, come back into forward bend, Placing the hands to the floor or to a block. Now we're going to come into a twist. You're going to take your right hand right underneath your face. Okay. Left hand's going to open up towards the sky. Palm open. So don't turn your fingers back behind you. Keep the palm nice and open so the chest opens. For three, two, one. And switch sides. Also trying to not... Sometimes we'll bend into that right leg twist. Keep both legs even. If they're both bent, good. Keep them at the same, same bent level, okay? And then check in that the low back is flat. So I can tell already that I turned a little bit through the low back. So I'm gonna try to maintain that as much as I can. And I can't go as far on this side and that's okay. I work with whatever I got. Okay. Good. Come back down, drop your head, just hang, breathing in fully, exhale completely, and then soften your knees, slowly come up, open up your arms, turn your left toes out, triple nasa and triangle, so we're going to draw the left hand down, shoulders against that imaginary wall. Holding here, pressing up through the back edge of the foot. Breathe. You'll feel it here in the side of your waist. Quadratus lumborum muscle. Four. Three. Two. And one. Softly bend into that front knee. Come back up. Glancing out over your left hand. Maybe taking a longer stride. Bend into that front knee. Push apart the mat with your feet. Notice if your left knee knocks in, draw it to the outer side of the foot. Good. Head over heart, heart over pelvis. And if you'd like, squeeze your glutes to help open the inner thighs. For four, three, two, and one. And we'll straighten the knee, we'll walk the feet in. Okay. And we're going to come down now onto the floor. We're going to do just a few last postures to finish up. Okay. Starting with a posture called Janu Shirshasan. So you're going to keep your left leg in, right leg extended out. Okay. I'm going to show you from the front and from the side. Okay. So we want to be on our sit bones. If you kind of tend to round, stick a blanket or something underneath your bum, try to lift. If you have tight hamstrings, take a block, slide it underneath your knee. And if this leg hurts to hold it up, you can also put a block underneath it too. So whatever feels good for you, find that. Hands square to either side of your leg. You're going to lift and lengthen through your low back. Start to slowly fold forward and down. So take your time, inhaling to lengthen, exhale to fold so that you're lengthening through your low back. And eventually we kind of get stuck. There's nowhere else to go. Then just drop your head. But try not to pull or strain or bring your head towards your leg on purpose. It's okay, wherever you are, stay and breathe. come back up and switch sides and I'll show you from the side what this looks like okay 
Right leg is in towards the groin, left leg is extended. Now I'm focusing on my low back. I'm on my sit bones, maybe at home you're not. So sit underneath something, okay? Square yourself to your extended leg. Lift and lengthen your spine. Slowly start to do that hip hinge movement, pushing the hips back, drawing the heart forward. I'm gonna come down as far as I can in the low back and then I'm stuck about here. Now I'm gonna round through my upper back, drop my head to where it naturally falls and breathe. My toes are pointing straight up and they're flexed in towards my shin to extend the muscle of the hamstring. Good, and slowly coming back up. We'll come into Paschimottanasana, the seated forward bend. Again, up on your sit bones, feet flexed in towards you. Lift and lengthen your spine. Raise your arms on the inhale. And as we exhale, hinging from the waist, slowly coming forward, forward, forward. And then we might have to round the upper back and just stay here. If you come forward to here, that's perfect. Again, remember that yoga is about the process, not about striking a perfect pose. Get that out of your head. It doesn't have to be a certain way and there is not one size fits all yoga posture. Everybody's bodies are different. Everyone has their certain little things about them that they need to maintain and take care of. So working within your own capacity always. When you're ready, come on out of this. Okay, we're gonna move into bridge pose now. I'm just gonna show you from this way. We're gonna lay down onto our backs. Walk the feet in, so the soles of the feet are on the floor and you want your heels roughly underneath your knees if you can get them there. Arms are alongside the body and we're gonna try to roll the shoulders kind of back and towards one another, shoulder blades, kind of tuck them in underneath us and then just rest the hands down. The back of the neck is long and the chin is in, so just give that a little adjustment too. Now at the bottom, we're gonna ground down through our feet, squeeze our gluteal muscles, your butt muscles, and lift up. Now if your, if your quadricep muscles are tight, it's gonna be hard to get some space here. That's okay, just stay with it. Breathe, 10, Nine, keep lifting, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and lower your hips gently, softening your back. Draw the knees in towards the chest. Just give a little rock out of the spine. And we're gonna come into happy baby. So the knees are gonna come wide, also the feet wide. Now it's okay if you can't reach your feet. What we're trying to do is reach for our big toes or the outer edges of our feet. If you can't hold the back of your, just hold the back of your thighs, stay here, okay? If you can, grab your feet, pull down. Now if your neck, if you're like this in arch, put something underneath your head so you can tuck the chin and lengthen the neck. Long, deep breaths, pulling the legs down, finding compression in the hip joint. Five, four, three, two, one. And then from here, our last posture, second last, because our final relaxation is coming. Arms are gonna come wide at your chest. Knees are gonna come down to the right wherever they just relax naturally and you're gonna turn your gaze over your left arm. Breathing into the chest, unwinding. We're coming to the end of our practice. Hopefully you're sensing more of that mellow vibe. There's been a lot of verbal instruction. I know most classes won't be so detailed, 
but we're working on building that foundation and for new beginners if you are new to yoga you'll need to learn these basics to keep you safe and stable okay let's go to the other side bring the knees in and across turn your head to the opposite way your knees are going and just breathe back to the center. We've made it to our end. We're now going to do our final relaxation pose. You're going to stretch your legs out. You want to take your feet wider than your hips and your arms out away from your body so that the shoulder blades can rest down, the hips can rest, and just make sure you're in a straight line. Okay? Then rest completely. Let go, unwind, close your eyes. Let your body be completely still. This posture is called Shavasan. Shava means corpse, asan means posture. The whole idea is that when you reawaken, you're born anew, you're refreshed, you're revitalized, you're ready to start your day. And I hope that this practice has served you well today. You can stay here as long as you'd like. You might finish up this practice with some breath work or meditation. Or if you have a busy day today, I'm just waiting for three more long exhales. And then moving on to the beautiful day ahead. If you're going to stay, I invite you to stay. If you're getting up to move on with your day, you can sit up. And we'll gently chant our closing mantra, the Om and three Shantis. Namaste.